Hey there everybody, it's Mark Rilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. This is one in an ongoing series of videos on how to draw clothing. Today we're going to be looking at how to draw hoodies. I've got three different characters here. I've drawn everything except the hoodies. Uh, so let's not waste any time. Let's just go ahead and get on with it. This will be the first lesson on how to draw a, a hood that is up over someone's head. All right, so uh, you can see that I've sort of <clears throat> made a light indication of the head indication. Indication, people. I'm bringing it back. People, nobody, nobody liked to suggest. They're like, bring back the indication. So there it goes by popular demand. Um, let's go ahead. I've got a little indication here of the guy's head, and um, I'm going to start sketching in the hood itself. Now, you know, of course, there's lots of different kinds of uh, hoods, and uh, so some people might say, well, that wasn't the kind that I wanted to learn, but uh, that's tough luck. <laughs> I guess I can't do them all. Can I? So let's go ahead and uh, keep going here. I'm, I'm making a line that curves up, and notice how the neck, it doesn't follow exactly along the neck. There's a little bit of gap there as it comes up and follows along the back of the head. And what I noticed, in, and you know, I sort of looked at a photograph. Ooh, nice squeaky chair there. Um, uh, looked at a photograph to get some uh, sense of, of what a real hood looks like on someone's head. And I was surprised to find that there was quite a uh, sort of a big gap uh, at the top um, of sort of excess cloth that was uh, forming at the top here. And uh, so that's something you can put in there if you want. I think it actually kind of makes a cool shape, makes a cool contour. So this line is coming straight down. It comes pretty near to the uh, to that initial uh, uh, indication of the head. And uh, as it comes across here, we reach a point where we have the opening. Now, what I wanted to do was show at least one version in which the hood is <clears throat> very nearly covering up the whole uh, head. Uh, or just, you know, open a little bit around the face. So I, in my case, I had already drawn the face, and uh, I'm beginning to draw the opening at the front of the hood. It is kind of a triangular shape, uh, with the, the one flat edge of the triangle being up here. And then we got two edges coming down here towards the base uh, of the chin. So... Um, you know what it actually looks a little bit like to me is that Superman, the Superman S on the front of his uh, chest, that, that kind of shape. What is that shape? I don't know, the Superman S shape. But it's got a little bit of that quality to it, um, at least in this version. And uh, that is going to be the, the opening, the open space here. Now, I found that it's helpful if you want to, to add a second line here that's kind of like a seam. I do this a lot, actually, when I'm drawing uh, clothing or all kinds of things, where you want to sort of reveal the structure of something. You get a secondary line in there, and uh, it sort of helps define... Uh, the surface a little more than if you just left it blank. Um, as for the folds, you know, with clothing, it's always all about the folds and the wrinkles and where do they go. Um, I'm finding in this pose that there's going to be a couple of lines coming down here towards that uh, base of the chin. So I'm going ahead and doing that, maybe a second one down here. Uh, maybe a line across near the collarbone kind of area that might uh, define that a little bit. Hey, define. Define, that's a new one. <laughs> They're like, no, go back to indicate, man. Uh, so this line is going to come down here to um, uh, follow the back of the head and uh, sort of define that just a little more. I, I don't know. I'm getting into define. Maybe define is uh, a keeper. Let me know. So uh, this, uh, th these basic lines here are pretty much uh, finishing it up. I want to, uh, on each one of these, we're going to have the, the sort of strings that come down, the cords, the pull strings. I guess they're pull strings. Uh, and, of course, there's always two of them, um, and, uh, you know, in real life, they sort of, like, sometimes become different lengths, but in your drawings, you can make them nice and perfect, perfectly balanced. Uh, and uh, that pretty much does it. I'm going to go ahead and time-lapse a little here to finish this one off. Um, oh, let me put one last thing in here, because the, there was, when I was looking at the photograph, I noticed to, to, to sort of show the... Um, looseness uh, or the fact that this is kind of just filled with air up here instead of following along the top of his head. A couple of extra lines in here can can help to finish that off. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch from my, uh, this is not the Ticonderoga, this is the Oriole again. I don't know, I'm, I'm, go I'm on an Oriole kick now. Um, and uh, switch over to the black Prisma color for doing my final lines and then we'll come back and uh, do the rest of them. All 
All right, so there's the first hood, and uh, this, uh, you know, you can see I've given this guy kind of an intense gaze. Um, it, uh, it is useful for uh, doing the sort of, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad guy, but kind of cool looking guy when you have the hood up over the head. In fact, sometimes uh, the hood will come all the way down and obscure the eyes. You know, maybe I can do that in a future video. But let's go ahead and move on to the next one and see what we can learn from that. Okay, with this one, I'm not as uh, zoomed in as much as I was with the other one. That's because I'm not only going to be doing the hood, but I'm going to be doing sort of the opening of her jacket or, or raincoat here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to draw the opening of the hood, or the hoodie. Some, you know, someone needs to educate me about this. Is there a difference between a hood and a hoodie? It's like the hoodie is for the girls and hood is for the guys. I don't know. Um, somebody teach me these things. Uh, vitally important, clearly, to being an artist is knowing the difference between a hood and a hoodie. So I'm drawing the uh, opening here. It comes across the top of, uh, uh, or not really the very top, but sort of across the, the middle of her um, uh, forehead. Uh, and uh, it uh, follows along here. And what I'm doing is creating a sort of a long, um, slightly diagonal line. This hood... Uh, is open. I mean, she doesn't have it zipped up or closed around her uh, face the way the guy did before. And so it comes down here, and this sort of just trails off into one side of um, this raincoat. I sort of see this as a raincoat, what she's wearing here. Now, one interesting thing that happens down here at the bottom is uh, as the opening comes down, it sort of opens out a little, and you begin to see the inside of the hood. Um, right here, and if you want to add a little detail here, you can get the uh, the zipper, and that helps sort of show that it's it's folding over, and uh, you're seeing the the sort of inside come out. And uh, I'm just making these lines uh, fairly loose down here because it is, like I said, an uh, an unzipped jacket that's uh, open for our view. Now, over here, a kind of interesting thing happens. Uh, the looseness of the cloth creates a small section. It's kind of roughly, I don't know, triangular sort of a section that's in there, um, which just is sort of loose folded cloth. And then over here, and notice the relationship between, you know, I had uh, the indication of the head. Uh, there's this kind of a loose um, gap between those two. And again, just a little bit of uh, sort of pocket uh, or pointed area up here. Um, uh, again, I just I, I noticed that coming up again and again in a lot of different types of hoods. Uh, before it curves back <clears throat> and reconnects with that first line of the opening. Now, one thing you can do is create a second sort of seam here that uh, um, shows kind of how the the cloth was folded together, and I'm going to go ahead and do, as I did before, a uh, kind of second line here. I like to do this with clothing a lot, just at the edge. It somehow completes it for me. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and time-lapse through. Oh, wait a minute. That's not it. i got to do the, um, the pull strings. So... I'm not so sure about how what the real length of these would be, but of course I don't want to go it out, have it go beyond the <laughs> video frame. So I am actually going to have it stop right here, whether it would really be that long or that short in real life or not. Um, please don't uh, attack me if this doesn't actually match up with real uh, clothing dynamics from real life. Um, let's go ahead and uh, kick it into time-lapse. I'm going to go ahead and add some shading, maybe come back. But one thing I'm going to be doing uh, that I think you'll uh, enjoy seeing is uh, adding a pattern, a sort of a plaid pattern to this. And that really does help uh, for uh, uh, indicating the surface and uh, making it just look a little more three-dimensional that way. But again, to save time, I'm going to go ahead and do all of this in time-lapse. Okay, so you can see how adding a little bit of a plaid pattern there uh, 
helps to uh, somehow sort of solidify it or I don't know it just makes it more attractive I think. So um, we've pretty much got everything done on this one. Let's move on to the last one which really should be the easiest of them all because it is uh, a hood uh, that has been pulled all the way down around the neck. So let's jump to it. All right, so I'm going to begin by making the sort of lower edge of the uh, the hood as it uh, lays flat on her shoulders. Uh, pretty much a horizontal line here, uh, but you got to be careful to have the, the midpoint of these two lines come a little over to the right here because uh, she's facing away from us. And uh, let's go ahead and do a sort of an outline here, starting over here. I'm going to give it just a little bit of an indention. It comes up and then curves around uh, until it reaches to the back of her neck, which I'm going to go ahead and indicate right here. I can't say casually anymore. It's always like, indicate. <laughs> it was, it's, you're not doing it naturally anymore, man. In the old days, it came from the heart. What happened? Anyway, so I'm, I'm going ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a, a couple of lines here on either side of the neck. And this is kind of the... Um, you know, the inside of the uh, uh, the hood sort of folds in on itself. So you end up with uh, a few lines that are coming around, uh, creating sort of overlapping sections as it uh, sort of flops down onto uh, <clears throat> her shoulders. It can be quite complicated, you know, these lines sort of intersecting with each other, um, uh, but generally all following uh, along uh, in, in sort of like a rope coiling in on itself, you know, each line uh, comes right outside of the last line and so forth until you've created a shape more or less like this. Of course, it's going to be different every time you see uh, one of these. It's going to sort of fall uh, in a different way and create different lines. But if you've got this basic shape, um, I think uh, you'll be getting the effect that you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of these little, uh, uh, what did I say they were called? Strings? Oh, I've totally forgotten. You know, those strings you pull on <laughs> for the hoodies. <laughs> what is it with me? And I never know the words for anything, but I can draw them most of the time. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, uh, kick this into time lapse as I often do uh, to add shading and just kind of finish it off. Okay, well that kind of takes care of that last one. I hope that you found that useful. Let me go ahead and pull back one last time so you can see all three at once and we'll have a few final words before I end the video. All right, well, there you have it. Three different ways of drawing hoods, hoodies, hooded people. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I'd like to thank the people who've got my graphic novels, Mickey Falls and Brody's Ghost. Greatly appreciate your support. Thanks so much to everyone who has ordered uh, the original artwork. Uh, the response has been really great. If you live in the United States, um, I encourage you to jump on that opportunity because I am going to open it up to international orders. And when that happens, I think it's going to, you know... There's going to be a backlog, and it's going to take me longer to get through them all. Uh, but for now, it is still just for um, people living in the United States. So I'll make a little link to that video if you want to put in one of those orders, and I greatly appreciate it if you do. But for now, let me go ahead and lay down the pencil, as I always do. And thank you, as I always do, for watching these videos, and leave you with the promise that I will be back with another one real soon.